Okay, so let's first talk about the importance of biasing. Why do we need biasing? And you might think, well, what is biasing? So before actually defining this term, let's just look at this circuit. Um, it's a circuit with a single transistor. I have a resistor at the collector of the transistor. The emitter is connected to ground and the base is connected to this uh, symbol that I used for a microphone. Okay. Let's say that my mic this, this microphone thing works like a voltage source and it generates a very small signal, right? Um, let's say that it generates, if this is T, time, and this is uh, the voltage of the microphone, it's something like this. Depending on the volume of the sound that reaches the microphone, um, it generates a small signal, right? And let's say that this signal is actually quite small. Let's say it's up to 1 millivolts, and it goes down to negative 1 millivolts. Okay, and I want to amplify this, right? Because, well, I want to amplify the sound and then I want to, let's say, play it on, on a speaker later or just want to record it and digitize it and do some sound and all, sound processing and whatnot, right? Uh, the first thing I want to do is that I want to amplify it, right? And I've heard that uh, using a transistor, I can actually amplify because these transistors work like a voltage controlled current source. So I can actually amplify whatever voltage appears at the base and I get a uh, bigger voltage at the output, for example, like here, right? Uh, or let's say just, let's make it even more simple. Let's say that somebody told me that this circuit is an amplifier, right? This configuration with the tr transistor gives you an amplifier and I want to verify it. Well, I've learned that um, when we're talking about amplification and signal analysis, I have to actually draw the small signal model of my transistor because the DC analysis, the, the way that the circuit looks like here, is only good for DC analysis. It's just good to f find out what is the DC current of the transistor and DC voltages of different terminals of my transistor. But if I want to know how much amplification do I get, I have to actually look into a small signal model. Okay. And uh, to do that, I have to find GM and R pi and R naught and all those things that we learned uh, in the previous lectures in chapter four. We're going to talk about, by the way, if you're a little bit uh, kind of uh, basically intimidated by the topic and you know, you're know you not sure why we call this thing an amplifier, uh, we're going to have two full weeks talking about amplifiers and designing amplifiers and different amplifier topologies. I'm just trying to uh, tell you that please accept from me that this is an amplifier and then we're going to discuss how basically we're, gonna ju we're just going to draw the small signal model of the circuit analyze it learn the importance of biasing and move on right uh, we are going to go back to the topic of amplifiers and how to design them and how to analyze them later just let's say that we have this circuit and if i want to draw the small signal model of this circuit I know that the transistor at the base is connected to some R pi going to emitter and then from emitter to collector I have this dependent current source that is GM V pi and V pi being the voltage across this resistor. Let's say that early effect exists so I have the R naught And that's my transistor. Now I have to draw the rest of my circuit. Um, I have RC that is connected to VCC, but I know that for small signal models, uh, the DC voltage sources become ground. So instead of VCC, I just put a ground here. And since the V out is connected to the collector of my Q1, remember here is collector, here is emitter, and here is the base. So I connect V out to the collectors. This is my RC, and I have what, I, what do I have connected to the base? It's the microphone signal. So I'm just going to put a signal source, V mic, and emitter is connected to ground. So I just connect it to ground. Okay. Now looking at this circuit, I can see that the R naught is actually connected to ground. Um, all of these three branches. Um, this one, this one, and this one are connected to ground. So just to simplify the circuit, 
I'm just going to redraw it and connect them to ground directly. It's just going to help me simplify the circuit and look at a simpler circuit. Now it's a two piece kind of isolated circuit. It's easier to actually analyze it. Now looking at the V out, one thing I can say is that if this is, I'm going to call this I out. Okay. Um, I know that V out, I can write it as RC in parallel with R naught times I out, right? And what is I out? Well, it's the negative of GMV pi. So it's going to be negative GM V pi times RC in parallel with R naught. And what is V pi? Well, it's just my V mic. Just looking at here, I can see that V pi and V mic are the same because they have the same polarity and the same magnitude. So it's just going to be negative GM RC in parallel with R naught times V mic. So that's my V out. Okay, great. So it looks like that I get a voltage output V out that is this much bigger than the input voltage V mic. So if I set my R0, RC, and GM to be, I don't know, I set the parameters so that this becomes a value like 100, then I have an amplifier that multiplies my V mic by a factor of 100. So I amplify with a gain, with a voltage gain of 100. It basically multiplies the signal by a factor of 100. I'm happy, great, nice, and good. Okay, so now what's the problem with this? Just looking at this circuit, uh, I'm going to tell you that there is a big problem here that I cannot get a gain as good as 100. Not even, uh, not only 100, I cannot even get a 10 or even a 1. Uh, this is actually going to, I, I claim that this V out is going to be quite small. It's going to be almost 0 volts. And by the way, remember, I'm not talking about the DC value of V out. The DC value of V out could be a, a, volt, a random voltage, like 3 point something or 4 point something volts. I'm talking about the fluctuations at the output, like basically the AC signal at the output. I'm saying that uh, I like these fluctuations to be, these, these, going, these signals going up and down to be 100 times bigger than the stuff at the input with the, with, with the linear proportionality. But then what I see actually is that I almost see no fluctuation. I see almost the perfect constant voltage at a certain level that, well, I don't care what is that level. That's a DC value of my voltage. It's just that I have no fluctuation. So when I talk to my microphone at the input, none of it is actually uh, appearing at the output. Therefore, I have a gain of zero. Okay. Why do I make such a claim? Well, this is one of the points that I like you guys to actually pause the video, think about it, and then resume and listen to my reasoning okay so i hope that everybody has done that or uh, by now and i'm gonna continue the discussion uh, assuming that you have all you all have thought about it okay so the reason that this doesn't work is that if you remember gm was defined as ic divided by vt Right. And VT was the thermal voltage, 26, 25, 26 millivolts. We, are, we, are, we don't care too much about that. It's almost a constant. How about IC? That's the DC current of my transistor. DC current of the transistor. Remember when I said that before doing any small signal analysis, you need to do DC analysis so that you know what is IC, so that you can calculate GM, and then after that you can actually calculate R pi because R pi was beta over GM, right? So what is IC? Well, we also remember that IC is equal to IS e to the power of VBE over VT. And we remember that to have a decent value for IC, like a milliamp, two milliamps, or a few milliamps, I need this VBE to be in the order of like 0.7 to 0.8, right? So for one to like, I don't know, 10 milliamps, let's say, okay? 
Why? Because, well, there's a diode between base and emitter, and I want that diode to be turned on, right? And I also remember that this exponential, I could have actually drawn it like this, that the x-axis is VPE, the y-axis is IC, and I knew that this is the relationship, and I knew that the slope of this exponential at any point is my GM, right? So I wanted VPE to be somewhere around, for example, here, which is 0 0.7, 0 0.8-ish, so that it has a slope that is pretty good, and that slope was actually the, this is really my, this, this local slope was my GM, which is delta IC over delta VBE, right? Now, looking at the circuit that I have right now, I can see that my emitter is at zero. So here I have zero volts. How about base? Well, my base voltage is not zero, but it's zero-ish. It's pretty darn close to zero. Why? Because, well, the voltage is actually going up and down by, well, a fraction of a millivolt. It's nothing nothing close to 700, 800 millivolts. It's in the order of millivolts, sometimes negative. So where I'm actually operating is somewhere around here on my chart, where the slope is almost zero. So there's no way for me to actually get a decent GM that results in this expression to be anywhere close to a decent number, right? So this is the reason that this circuit can never be a good amplifier, or at least in the, in, in the current form, it cannot be a good amplifier. I might actually have to, no, not might, I have to actually change the circuit in, in a way to actually make it a better uh, circuit that can actually amplify for me, okay? So the idea of moving the circuit from, well, a transistor that is operating at an almost off stage, because looking at this expression, this exponential expression, I can see that when my VBE is almost one millivolts or very close to zero, my IC is almost zero. So I have no current, have no current flowing through the uh, collector or emitter or the base. Therefore, my V out, well, the voltage across the resistor is going to be almost zero volts because there's no current. Uh, I'm talking about this resistor, by the way. So let's say if VCC is five volts, my V out is going to be five volts. So I'm going to have a DC voltage at five volts at the V out. As I said, it's not the DC value of V out that becomes zero. It's the AC. It's the variations that become zero, right? So basically, no matter what is my input, and how, how much fluctuations do I have at the input, my output is just going to be a flat DC. And that, that means that I don't have a good amplifier. Okay. Now, let me actually clean up here a little bit. Okay. Now, how do I fix this? Because, well, I don't want my, my trends. I, I want this amplifier to have some gain, right? So the process of actually placing the transistor's operating point at a at a nice point on this at a decent point on this chart meaning that uh, placing vbe and ic um, or like basically placing the operating point of my transistor somewhere that it has a decent slope a decent that results in a decent gm is called biasing so i have to somehow make sure that i have enough vbe that so i need to be like make sure that my vbe is at least like here or here let me show it with red or here 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 that the higher i go the better right and i've talked about the trade-off before that the higher i go i'm gonna uh, burn more and more uh, current at the collector so it's not something that i like and also the more current i have at the ic the more voltage drop i'm gonna have across this resistor because the voltage drop here is going to be rc times ic therefore i'm pushing more and more it, it means that my vc here is going to be smaller and smaller therefore i'm pushing my transistor more and more towards saturation so i don't want to go crazy high currents and crazy high vpe but i don't want to be anywhere around here right so there's a sweet spot. It's generally a good rule of thumb, as I mentioned, as I have mentioned to you before, is between 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 volts, right? So I want to place my transistor's operating point around that voltage, so that I have a good gain, and also I don't risk saturation. I don't have a high power consumption. 
Um, so it's a good trade-off between all different parameters and all different performance uh, aspects that I care about. How do I do that? Well, one very easy way to do that is instead of having a circuit shown above, I can actually have the same circuit. I'm just going to quickly redraw that circuit. And instead of just having the microphone that looks like this, I connect this to a DC voltage here and put that DC voltage to whatever VPE that I like to have. Let's say I want to have 0.75 volts. Okay, so this way, my input signal that appears at the base of my transistor is going to look like this. So if this is time and this is the V at the base, I'm going to have the same kind of fluctuations, but around 0.75. This way, my transistor is on. I'm going to have a decent GM. I'm going to have a decent IC, therefore decent GM. And I can actually, by setting RC and R0 value, I can get a very decent gain out of my amplifier. Okay? So that's, that's, a, that's an easy fix to this problem. Now, the second question that we need to answer is that, well, if I need a voltage source for every single transistor that I have in my circuit, and Initially in this course, when we start talking about chips and integrated circuits, I mentioned that we might have billions of transistors on a single chip. And let's say that all those transistors are definitely not going to be um, related to like amplifiers. They might be actually doing some, some other stuff. So uh, they, they have other functionalities. But let's say out of that 1 billion, a thousand of them is related to an amplifier. Does that mean that I need for every single microchip, I need uh, a thousand voltage sources and a, and a thousand batteries? That, that, that is crazy, right? Because there's no way that I can actually fit all those batteries in a single, like, I don't know, cell phone, right? Um, I cannot place, like, whenever I want to have a miniaturized electronic device, um, I need to make sure that, well, the first, one of the most important things is that I want to make sure that the size of this device, the form factor is actually quite small and quite minimal, right? So how do I actually take care of this problem? That's the, uh, the, the, the topic of our discussion today. It's basically the, bi the circuits that allow us to do the biasing, meaning that the circuits that allow us to have this 0.75 volts um, across the base of our, across the base of my transistor without needing a new battery. Basically what we are trying to do is that I'm going to say, I'm going to claim that I'm going to only need one battery or maybe like, well, two, two different voltage sources, right? But for all the circuits that we're going to talk about today, it's just going to be one, right? So let's say that we have one five volt battery that comes to our chip. To our integrated circuit and we want to generate all different kind of dc voltages that we need for different transistors because for one transistor or one amplifier you might need a 0.75 for another transistor you might need 0.8 or like later we will see for pmos transistors you might actually need a very small voltage let's say 0.5 or like even less than that or like you might have a different kind of a circuit that requires a voltage like two volts some arbitrary value right so we're going to learn circuits that allow us to generate arbitrary DC voltages that we can use them to bias transistors in our amplifier circuits.